preview of Noah's Destination 2021 back to Budokan as uh, the return to Budokan, of course, for Processing Noah, the first time since the final burning show, which was 2013. So, a eight year uh, return. And finally, Noah is back. I wish fucking COVID wasn't still rampant and running through fucking Japan, or I would have loved to have seen a, a damn near packed house. I'm assuming. It wouldn't have been, probably would have had at least, I would say around 10,000 people. Maybe a little less than that. But still, that would have been a hell of a hell of a crowd uh, for this Budokan show. But uh, maybe even less than that. But I just feel like they're going all out for this. You know, it, it was announced earlier uh, today, as I'm recording this, of course it's on the 9th, uh, that... Uh, they were going to have Jinichiro Tenru as part of the uh, commentaries table. They're going to have like a Legends one, so obviously Kobashi is going to be there. They were going to announce one more too, which will be announced uh, after I upload this video, which I'm assuming it's probably going to be Akira Tawe. It's a long shot if it's Toshi Kawada. That'd be nuts. As for the big time main event, uh, big time being uh, history could be made there to end the main event as Kaiji Mudo. A 58-year-old Kaijimuto takes on Go Shizaki for the GAC Heavyweight Championship. And if he wins it, he becomes the third person to uh, hold all three. Uh, as far as the All Japan Triple Crown, the IWGP Heavyweight, and of course the GHC Heavyweight. Uh, joining Kinsuke, Sasaki, and Yoshihiro Takayama. Now here's the thing. Uh, obviously we're going to get to talking about that main event later on. But I will say this. Kajimuto is 58 years old. Should he be in that main event for the heavyweight title? Probably not. And you're thinking of uh, kind of other big kind of significant moments involving s someone's age. You know, Ric Flair retired, air quotes on the retirement, at uh, WrestleMania 24 against Shawn Michaels. He was y a year younger than Kajimuto is. Right now, he was 57. Uh, that is just nuts. Actually, I think he was 56. I think he was two years younger than Kaijimuto is now, as Kaijimuto turned 58 in December. Uh, that's fucking nuts. That should not be a thing, but here we are. Uh, I would have loved to seen this crowd, you know, if this was a jam-packed crowd, if the COVID wasn't going on, uh, you know, how, if that would have drawn, if Kaijimuto would have brought in a house, it, him being in the main event, that would have been intriguing. I, I'm not sure, I don't think it would have, but... You never know, I guess. Uh, we would have never... guess it's just a hypothetical at this point. As this is a nine-match card, uh, this is going to be on uh, Fight TV, and it's going to be on Russell Universe. So if you have Russell Universe, you can get it for 999 yen, and if you're on, getting it on Fight TV, it's probably, what, 10, 15, hopefully, you know, less than 20 bucks, just because you, know, you could get it for 999 yen, and it'd just be... A lot cheaper for you if you went that route. But uh, whichever you, you go with here, uh, either way, uh, this show, it is very historic. I think the card in itself, is it uh, must-see stuff? Uh, maybe. You know, I think I don't think there's really... my The match I'm probably the most looking forward to seeing is actually just a regular tag match that's going on. Uh, it's the seventh match on the card. But uh, we'll talk about that when we get there. As We're going to start with the opener. And it is Ak Akatoshi Saito taking on Kenya Okada as this is an awesome spot for Okada. You know, Kenya K uh, Okada, still young in his career, obviously, and having this big-time matchup against you know, a legend in Saito who, just weirdly enough, just a year ago, had a, a fucking GHC title match against Go Shizaki. Uh But yeah, I mean, this is awesome for both guys to, you know, this Kenya Okada's first-ever Budokan match. Akatoshi Saito, I want to say he was at the final burning show. Let me just take a quick look as I just kind of skim through it. Yeah, he was. He was at the final burning show. He was on Brave's team. That makes sense. So, uh, making his return to Budokan, that's fun. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be an awesome moment. Obviously, uh, Saito's going to win. If Kenny Okada won, which I highly doubt that, uh, that'd be nuts in itself. But I just feel like they're just going to give it to Akatoshi Saito. Just, that's probably the right thing to do. Ak Akatoshi Saito, a uh, legend in his own right. Very much a legendary, I would say, almost main event guy. Like that upper mid-card, mid-card talent that you know, was, had a, uh, 
at a GHC title match against Kenta Kobashi during that legendary reign. Uh, you know, he still going strong. Let's say he had some awesome gear in his day with those leather pants and horrendous tattoos on him. He's just iconic. Uh, maybe for some of the wrong reasons, but still iconic nonetheless. Uh, so that's fun to see him have a, you know, some, uh, a match here on the card. As our next matchup, it's a six-man as it is uh, At Atushi Kotoji, Daiki Anabe, Yasutaka Yano, taking on Hajime Ohara, Yohei, and then Kai Fujimura. So this is a lot of young talent getting thrown in here. This is a bit of a full throttle versus, uh, like, you know, Noah Army. <laughs> As uh, you have uh, with... Uh, Yohei is probably going to take the the win here. Obviously, Atsushi Kutaji and, and Yohei probably the two biggest. And, you know, Ohara is probably like one, two, three as far as name values in this matchup. So, it's, you know, it's kind of evenly placed. you got the three kind of younger-ish talents. And then you have three of the the uh, main stars of really the junior division is kind of more. This kind of a junior young lion-ish <laughs> six-man. But as far as who's going to win, yeah, I'm sticking with the... The full throttle selection. I just feel like that's probably for the best. As the next matchup in a hell of an undercard matchup, for you, I do say so myself. It's Baba Yan and Shoei Taniguchi taking on the M Alliance team of Masataki, Machizuki, and Masato Tanaka. What a fucking team. Obviously, when Masato Tanaka joined Pro Wrestling Noah, I want to say it was last month. It's so weird how the time has escaped me uh, through, uh, thanks to the, the COVIDs, but. I just, I feel like it was January. I don't think it was before uh, the end of 2020, but I want to say it was January. But uh, yeah, Masada Tanaka, and of course being in the M Alliance is fucking perfect. Uh, Masada Tanaka, obviously the goddamn man, as is Machizuki. That's a hell of a team. I'm assuming they're going to get the win over, over Muhammad Yon and uh, Shoei Taniguchi. But uh, this is, uh, this is going to be a fun-ass matchup. But hopefully Masada Tanaka and Taniguchi... Mess it up a little bit in there, because, I mean, that's some two big, bad motherfuckers that are going to throw down. That is something I'm looking forward to seeing. As far as these four men, I know uh, Shoei Taniguchi was at the final burning show, as was Muhammad Yan. I miss, I don't think Machizuki was at the final burning show, and I doubt Masato Tanaka was. But uh, it's still, it's a, it's a fun return from Avignon and Shoei Taniguchi. And, uh, and Masato Tanaka being at Budokan, that just, just seems right. He's a legendary figure in my eyes. Even though was never really given, like, a big-ass run anywhere. Obviously, you know, kind of more of less zero one one in FMW. But uh, he's, he's fucking awesome. Who doesn't love Masato Tanaka? As our next matchup, and it's a 12-man tag. Dear God. As I can't believe they fit everybody on the graphic as it's Suzu as it's Sujuar gun and gun Congo as uh, I about said uh, Suzuki gun there. I just it was <laughs> recording the preview for New Japan and for fucking Pro Wrestling Noah back to back might be a little bit you get to your little tongue tied as Sujuar gun obviously the guy's Sujuar Kazushi Sakuraba Nozawa uh, Kazuki Vegeta Kazunori Murakami another man who returned. Uh, Joining uh, Sujuar Gun, which is fucking perfect, and Kendo Cash, and taking on uh, Gongo, which is Abe Nakajima, Masa Kiyomiya, Manabo Soya, Hoya, Nio, and then Tadatsuki, who, uh, yeah, with a closing of basic, uh, basically retails, and he joined Kongo with that. Uh, this is obviously fun as hell. First of all, Sujuar Gun, what a phenomenal stable. I mean, you're talking about some badass motherfuckers. You got, <laughs> obviously, Sujuar. You got Sakuraba, you got Fujita, Murakami, and Kendo Cash, and some, and then those hours crazy ass to, to add a little flavor on top. What a fun ass match! I cannot wait to see this. Uh, this is just a fun, like, why not have this on the biggest show? Obviously, I think Congo's the weaker stable of the two, uh, just because you know, it's Nakajima. Nakajima, God bless him, but it's just him out there because obviously Keno's got his national title match. And you got Masaki Mia beside him. Other than that, and you know, Manabu Suya, but then you got a couple of juniors in there as well. Where you just have Sujuragun, just a bunch of killers and shooters over there. 
I'm hoping Sujora Gun gets the win, but I wouldn't be upset if Congo does get the win to help help elevate their status as a stable. We shall see, though, as uh, Stinger taking on Katoru Suzuki and Ikuda Adaka for the GHC Junior Heavyweight Tag Team title. As Stinger, Hayata, and Yoshinori Ogawa, I was shocked when they got the belts back uh, before the end of the year. And now, uh, you know, Katoru Suzuki and Hakuda Adaka, which, you know, we just saw Katoru Suzuki challenge for the belts. It just was his, with his kind of mystery or in his former uh, mystery partner. Now he's got Hakuda Adaka there, who I love Hakuda Adaka, one of the best technical juniors of the past decade. I uh, would see two decades now, <laughs> as we're in the 2021. Uh, it's crazy that he was still doing all Japan junior work last year and he was still killing it. He's the fucking man. Uh, it's awesome that Nozawa is going to be beside him. So that's, that's fun uh, for them. Uh, you know, Katoru Suzuki and uh, the junior title in itself. Kind of was surprised that, you know, there wasn't, the, 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 you know, they just won the belts back in November of, uh, you know, when they beat uh, Kanemaru, or when they, when they beat Kanemaru, Jesus Christ, uh, when they beat uh, Atsushi Kutag and uh, Daisuke Harada, just, I uh, was kind of shocked at that, just a quick little back and forth, back and forth they had to uh, really all of 2020 uh, from May to October and then to November. It would be nice to have another junior team in there, as, uh, you know, this is hopefully, we're hoping, that at least, that uh, with uh, they can do something a little different with this junior division. As I, you know, Katoru Suzuki and Yushinori Ogawa, no stranger to each other, obviously former Stinger guy, Katoru Suzuki. Uh, they were champions two years ago, 2019, I want to say. Uh, but they... Yeah, uh, with you know, Gawa and Suzuki formed Stinger, so they were you know the OG two Stingers of uh, Katoru Suzuki. So the history is there for this junior heavyweight tag team title matchup. As I say this, I, I was hoping that Katoru Suzuki and Hakuda Hakuda Adaka would win up end up winning this junior heavyweight tag team title match. I just don't see it happening. I feel like they're gonna keep with Stinger. It's a damn shame, but I just I got a feeling. Just got a got a gut feeling. Hopefully, though, my gut is wrong, and hopefully they do uh, do the title switch. Here in Budokan, that'd be nice. That'd be awesome. But, uh, yeah. Daisuke Harada and uh, Tsuki Yoshioka as our next junior, uh, our GHC junior heavyweight title matchup. is obviously Daisuke Harada. I don't see him dropping the belt anytime soon, even though this is, I want to say, defense number five going into this title matchup. Uh, he... Has been just fantastic so far in his. Oh, uh, it's. I think it's been. I think it's been five. I want to really uh, look it up just really quick as I'm talking. That's a great thing about doing these sometimes when I got the, the ability to just look up shit. And I'm just like, oh, let's just make sure I'm right here. As I know it's his fourth reign. I know that much for old guy's guy Rada. He's only had the the belt now. This his reign has only lasted about a hundred days. So, no, it's defense number two. Oh, that's right. Katoru Suzuki's was five. He was the previous champion. Uh, yes, but the uh, Daisuke Arata, I just feel like they're going to keep keep the, the, the belt on uh, Daisuke Arata. As far as uh, we have with uh, Seiki Yoshioka, he has been a, really a part of, like, Russell 1 there. He was at the last Russell 1 show. Once Russell 1 closed down, he joined Processing Noah. Solid junior, not great. I don't think. I think he could have had the potential to be great if he had other, like, aspirations as far as other talent to work with him. As far as, like, the Russell 1 talent pool was you know, not not the greatest. There were some, obviously, gems in there as far as Russell 1 goes. Like, Shatoru Ashino is... Daisuke Arata, for my money, is the best junior in Pro Wrestling Noah. So I do like that the best junior is the champion, oddly enough. That, what an odd concept I know, but it just seems like when your best guy is the, the champion, it does help the division a lot more. Plus, it gives him more guys to feed, and eventually whoever beats him will hopefully be elevated to uh, a spot much like uh, Daisuke Arata. As, uh, yeah, but that should be a, a, a fun little match. Daisuke Arata's... A uh, perfect junior for him because Yoshiko is, uh, you know, technically sound. I would say he's one of those technical juniors which for us I know is kind of vast in much like all Japan is, uh, which is where they have a lot of 
unique juniors where you don't kind of see everywhere else, where they're very map based and they're very fast on the map. The Gork got a lot of holds, and it's an, it's an interesting title for sure. As the next matchup, and the match I am the most looking forward to seeing on this card, namely Chimar Fuji and Jun Nakayama taking on Kaito Kiyomiya and Yoshiki Inamura. Yeah, this matchup. I think it's going to be the best matchup on the card if it's given the right circumstances and given the right kind of flavor. This is an awesome match, though, on paper. You have the old card. You have Jun Akiyama, you know, was the unofficial fifth pillar of all Japan, was a huge part of Pro Wrestling Noah, and is now just kind of freelancing between, like, DDT and Noah and just kind of everywhere he can. And Naomi Chimura Fuji, who's the fucking man, who's been probably, you know, if you want to talk about just all-time grade Noah talents, obviously in the top five, I think, Naomi Chimura Fuji definitely is. Just as far as his longevity, what he's done with the company, he is, uh, for, for what, you know, what, without a doubt, you know, Mr. Prosling, no, uh, as uh, Kaito Kiyomi and Yoshika in, uh, Inamura, though, they are on the younger side. The it's you, the old gun and the young young guns. You know, Kaito Kiyomiya is part of this new revolution of of junior stars, or not really junior stars. Jesus Christ, a new revolution of uh, younger Parsing Noah guys. You know, start led with him. We had Keno as far as the guy who was founded in fucking Michinoku Pro. He was brought out of Michinoku Pro by Parsing Noah, and then is now uh, helping lead the way in Yoshiki. Inamura, who is fantastic, who has been a, a guy that I have loved. He was in Big Japan for a hot minute, and he uh, was, uh, I want to say it was like a mini, like, documentary. Maybe it was just, like, a show. I forget exactly what it was, but they had, like, a, a little series in, uh, for basically like a, a college for Japanese wrestlers where they, it was all these like they would like go to school and like this whole thing it was just a fun little concept but he was part of that he had like a, the awesome mohawk even then it was just an awesome look and I was like this fucking guy is awesome let's see more of him he gets signed by Big Japan and goes on to great things he's fucking awesome so I'm happy for this spot on the card I mean this is damn near uh, you know we're almost at the culminating event here for this high profile matchup I think they're a great team I think they're a team that can definitely go into future GHC tag team title matchups, for sure. Uh, they, you know, they are a fun-ass team. And I'm hoping for a win, to be honest. I'm hoping for either Kaito beating Jun Akiyama or Kaito beating Naomi Chimura Fuji, just to kind of give Kaito a big win on a big stage. I think that'd be huge for him. Uh, Yoshiki Inamura, I'm hoping he does not take the fall, because I have a bad feeling that he will. But if he if he could stay alive in this matchup and have Kaito get the pin for him, that'd be great. But yeah, that's a matchup I'm just the most looking forward to seeing on this old card. It's our co-main event, GHC National Title Matchup, Keno, the champion taking it on Mazagatsu Funaki. Obviously, you have the M Alliance tie with Mazagatsu Funaki. I feel like, as far as uh, the M Alliance, I have a very bad feeling that uh, either they're going to win all their matches... Or they're just going to win the undercard matchup. It's either going to go either way. That kind of scares me as far as that standpoint. Because I think Keno has done a tremendous job as a national champion. He's been fantastic. He is fantastic. He's he's a great talent. And he helps with him and Nakajima in Congo with Masaki and Mia. And they just kind of have to get bigger and better guys in there for Congo to really be a uh, viable stable in my opinion. Because really right now, Sujora Gun and I think the M Alliance, thanks to adding Masato Tanaka... And even uh, Kazumi Mirakami has added to being a, a more viable threat than Congo has. But Congo is more top-heavy, whereas those two have, uh, you know, everything from top to bottom as far as great talent. So it's tough. It's tough to really digest that down. But for this matchup, I'm hoping Keno gets the win. I'm very scared, though. Masagatsu Funaki, you know, God bless him. You know, Masagatsu Funaki is fucking... I think he's... I want to say, want to say, he's probably in his low, either low low 50s, high 40s. I, I'm going to guess 48 off the top of my head. It just seems like, you know, it's the, the story of Pro Wrestling Noah, sadly, sometimes, is a lot of these heavyweight guys are seeing, they're 50 plus. You know, Tsujiura is 50. Uh, Kazuki Vegeta's in his 50s. Uh, Kaiju Muto, you know, is 58. <laughs> is in the, so it is kind of when you have these young stars, like Keno, like 
uh, even Go Shizaki, who's now just hitting his in his prime and is in the prime of his career in his mid thirties. It uh, makes those guys just look incredibly young, look like babies. Fucking Kaito Kiyomiya, for instance, like he just he looks like a baby out there compared to a lot of those guys, and it's just uh, it's it's an interesting booking strategy that Zawa's been doing because he's relying a lot on Emma Lyon so far. And, uh, man, that Kaiji Muto kaito Kime match still gives me nightmares. That was a horrendous matchup. I just have a bad feeling. Because uh, it just sucks. Because Prost Noah had such a good thing going with Go Shizaki's title reign. And I just have a feeling tonight, or at th that night, rather, at, at uh, in Budokan, it just all, it's going to come crashing down. And it's, uh, it's going to be a goddamn shame. But hopefully Kino wins. And for the main event, Go Shizaki Kaiji Muto. I mean, Go Shizaki's title reign has just been uh, anything short of fantastic. He has really... I think it's been the greatest reign for the GHC heavyweight title since probably... I would have to say Takashi Sujiura's 2009 reign, which that was that reign was fantastic, and that really submitted like Takashi Sujiura as like a heavyweight viable like badass motherfucker. I had 14 defenses, like he broke Kobashi's defense reign. Uh, just was fantastic. I would love, would love to see, uh, you know, Go Shizaki's had the 402 days. He surpassed Kaito's reign, which again, that was a great reign itself. So we've had really some great reigns throughout the years, just even uh, early on in, in our short history. Just, you know, Takashi Jura's 2018, 2017 reign was great. Uh, Kaito's reign was great. And, you know, now Go Shizaki's reign has been fantastic. It's, uh, it's gonna be a goddamn shame if it all comes to an end here with, uh, Kajimuto. Because it, it's tough. Um, there's two different ways of going about this. One side, I absolutely love, love Kajimuto. I think he's uh, definitely one of the all-time greats as far as Japanese pro rest goes. Arguably top five guy all time, just as far as what he's done as popularity-wise. You know, working here in the, in the States here for WCW and the NWA. Uh, just as far as his pull and how he revolutionized the business with Great Muda character, there's just so many things to where uh, you know he took what Kabuki did and just took it to a whole other goddamn level as far as athleticism and what he could do was just insane. And having another a whole other style when he was the Great Muda character, and then you know revolutionizing the business again as Kaiji Muto in 2001 at All Japan creating the Shining Wizard, just so much great shit he's done throughout these years. And to have that accomplishment of being one of the three guys that's going to hold all three main belts, I do feel like he deserves it. Absolutely. I think he's probably the biggest name out of those three, you know, as far as Takayama and Kinsuke Sasaki. I love Takayama. I love Yoshio Takayama. Takayama's kind of more known for, you know, his legitimacy and being a bad motherfucker and was more like a freelancer. Same thing with Kinsuke. Kinsuke was more... Uh, you know, he worked for All Japan, he worked for New Japan, he worked for Noah, he worked for a fucking K office for Diamond Ring, you know, he had all these, very much a freelancer, but you have Kaiji Mudo, who had his time basically everywhere now, he was part of New Japan for most of the 90s, leaves in 2001 to go to All Japan, forms Russell One, now he's here in Noah, and it just seems like it's been a lot more fitting of a thing, whereas Takayama... Even though he worked everywhere, worked all Japan, New Japan, Noah. Usually, you know, in Noah's early years, too, as a main heavyweight contender. Uh, here with, with this, it's just going to come down to his age. At 58 years old, should he be a champion of a main promotion? No. No. <laughs> he has no business being in the goddamn ring. Especially after what we saw him do with Kaito Kimiya. That match was god-awful. But here's the thing, though. Uh, at, what, at what point is it like, alright, you're, you're cutting him off. Is it 50? Because you have Takashi Sujiura just had an absolute banger with Go Shizaki in December, and he's 50 years old. Uh, you have him and uh, Kazuki Vegeta had him and Go had a banger, and it went like 50 fucking minutes. It just the way kind of things go. I want to say the cutoff now is like 50. I'm gonna say 55. 55 is the cut, and it, it's just kind of crazy how the the evolution of athletes have come. I mean, at 50 years old. It seemed like they were ancient, but now you, you have a whole new breed of athlete now where it's, they're just bad motherfuckers still going strong at 50. Uh, you know, Minoru Suzuki still going strong at 50. There, there's just 
there's not just the one guy, there's so many guys throughout Japanese pro wrestling that are still going strong. It's just Kaijimuto's went to the point of too much and it's too far. His knees were shot years ago. He got into the surgery though. Try to fix him, but still, he's still a uh, battered and broken man. It's a damn shame, but it's probably going to happen. If it doesn't, I'll be ecstatic for sure, because uh, I just, the way Go's run has been going, this man could definitely hit double digits in defense is no problem. I mean, you can set it up to where he drops it to the guy who wins the N1 victory. I thought he should have dropped it to Nakajima the first time around. Kind of crazy how now they could somewhat do that to do the rematch and down the line have Nakajima beat him uh, for the you know, for the belt. You can go that way. I kind of hope that does not happen. Uh, honestly, I'm hoping that it's somebody new, somebody that they can elevate and just kind of have their, his first reign as a as a champion. Though Nakajima's second reign would be fun too. Uh, it's an interesting time, interesting time for Prasa Noah if Go keeps the belt. If he doesn't keep the belt, it's going to be a sad time in Pro Wrestling Noah. What a short run they had as a really viable top Japanese pro wrestling company. Really from, I would say, you know, 2019 to basically 2000, oh, a two-year run. Maybe, a little, you know, 2018, they were really coming together, coming strong with Suchuara to Kaito and to go. The, the, the reigns were fantastic. But, uh, you know, it's... I don't think it's going to go to the point where it was in 2015 and 2014 with, like, Suzuki being champion with uh, fucking interferences all every goddamn main event. I don't think it's going to get to that level of shit. We're hoping it doesn't, but uh, it was a, a scary, scary time there for a couple of years in Brazil. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get to those scary times again. Thank you all for listening to my preview, if you made it this far. God bless you. Now we're clocking in just under 30 minutes. But I uh, hope you all, or at least can find some excitement and enjoyment from the show. I think as far as that, uh, there's going to be times, there's going to be, I think, flashes of greatness, but that main event's going to be tough. If Go Shizaki can pull out an absolute, not even banger, just a match that's like out of 0 to 10, like a 7, just slightly above average match with Kaiji Muto, he's a fuck, he's... He's the GOAT, you know, he's, that's unbelievable, because I just don't think it's going to happen. We shall see, though, as I, I don't think I'll be able to do a review for the show, because I just will, I don't think I'll be home on that uh, Friday, which uh, sucks, but that uh, is what it is. I hope uh, everything goes well, and we will catch you guys uh, next time for more Japanese Pro Wrestling previews and reviews.